Yes, indeed. It's Modcast time on a Tuesday, and football never dies. It's day one of spring practice for Texas. We're 32 days from a spring game. Circle it on your calendar, April 20th. And we got the experts here that saw day one of practice, you know, as much as they let them see of practice. They saw it today. They're going to tell you what they saw. Uh, It is the Modcast. By the way, Jeff Ketchum, Gets pulled into a meeting because that's what happens sometimes when you're the boss. He got pulled into a meeting this afternoon. I'm Chad Hastings. That is Jason Sukamel in your upper right. Your lower left is, of course, Anwar Richardson. Alex Dunlap is the lower right. And with all due respect to everybody else, he's definitely winning the hair game today. I don't see Jason's hair, but I think that may be the reason. And Anwar and I are, you know, we're, we're bringing yeah. what we're bringing. We're <laughs> Anwar is embracing the baldness in a way that I'll never be able to, and I'm just me. Uh, So we (laughs) are going to get you as much Texas football info as we can. And remember, it doesn't cost you anything to hustle or to like, subscribe to, and get notifications for the YouTube channel. So do all that so you don't miss anything. Gentlemen, practice number one today. You were all there at different perspectives uh, of this thing. And uh, let's just jump right into it. And uh, we'll just start with kind of maybe biggest story overall. Anwar, obviously you were there for the Sark stuff. We'll get to that part. But from y'all's perspective, Jason, let me start with you. A big takeaway from today, day one. Is there a huge big takeaway or is it just the train got started? You know, I'd love to say something dramatic, Chad, and just say, oh, yeah, this, this, and this. But uh, I would say the train got started is a good way to describe it. But, you know, Alex and I mentioned earlier, and Anwar probably did too. I didn't see his segment. But, uh, you know, you can get some glimpses of some things. We saw some different rotations in the receiver and some different lineups with the receivers. And, uh, you know, Alex obviously always pays close attention to the offensive line. So we can dig into that a little bit. And For me, it's always interesting that first day you get to see some of the true freshmen and you're like, whoa, that dude looks the part. That dude looks the part. Um, Both the running backs certainly look the part to me just from a purely physical perspective. Uh, Xavier Filsamy, the the freshman freshman safety, excuse me, I thought, man, that dude looks like a million bucks. I I was literally just reading the comments on my uh, photo gallery that I posted and people are saying, wow, that dude does not look like a true freshman and he really doesn't. Um, I thought Parker Livingston, the, the true freshman receiver, man, I thought he moved well. He looked very fluid. This is a guy who mm-hmm. uh, missed most of his senior, almost all of his senior year of high school, but he sure looked the part out there today, ran well, made a, a nice sliding catch on the sidelines. To be fair, he did drop a deep over the shoulder catch. It was a little bit tricky, but, you know, I thought all in all, man, I thought the guys looked good and it's just kind of exciting to be out there uh, watching some football on the grass again. One thing I didn't hear from anybody today, Anwar, was the notion that Tory Becton is overpaid or <laughs> is lazy and not doing his job. Just feels like there's a lot of different versions of uh, of that team mm-hmm. looking. I've heard the phrase "look the part" uh, a, a lot. So overall, for you, if there's a big if there's a big theme, is it just this still looks like a pretty good damn football team? It's put together the right way in theory. Well, there's a couple of things. One, um, I don't think we looked at anybody who was out there and then thought to ourselves, like, well, that guy doesn't look like he should be here. I mean, everybody looked like a physical specimen, so I will say that. I think a big takeaway from me, hopefully I'm not stealing anything from the Alex uh, Dunlap files, but I know he has a ton. (laughs) I mean, when I I snuck over to the offensive line and looked at those guys, I mean, those are just – I don't even know if massive is even is fair to describe those guys, but I just looked at a a, a group of people that were not only huge for like your Connor Strohs of the world or anything to that effect, or even the Trev, Trevor Goosby, who may not be as huge as a Cam Williams, but also looked in shape. Uh, but I saw a guy like a Peyton Kirkland, who I thought last year didn't look to be in that great a shape to me. It came back this year, and I thought he looks in phenomenal shape, looks much better. I just looked at that offensive line and that grouping, and I just all I just saw was just massive human beings. And I remember a few years ago, uh, before these guys got here, I mean, you just had a couple of big guys, 
and that was about it. And you know, you have somebody that tops the tips the scale like 320, 330. Cool, that was cute. Um, now everybody is just just huge gap fillers. So I was really, really impressed when I walked over the offensive line, just looking at a big athletic man that could just move people. Alex, you've had a chance now to get back from practice, you know, get a little bite to eat, chill out, relax, write some stuff as well. What's on your brain right now at four o'clock? No, I mean, I think these guys said a lot of it, man. I mean, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, we'll talk about a bunch of stuff, but I yeah. think just an overriding theme. Um, Anwar hit on it, dude. It's like you didn't used to go to practice and um, we've had springs wherever they did. Chad, this isn't. This isn't hyperbole to say that we've had springs where they didn't have five scholarship offensive linemen ready to go. Like we would have to wait until summertime to be able to say like, well, at least once summer gets here, they'll have nine. So they only have to have a walk on guy as one of the guys on the second team. And so like you would have to, you know what I'm saying? You'd have to kind of categorize it like that. Anwar begins talking about these 2023 offensive line guys and when they came in you're like well okay you know connor strope you know big baby faced guy that you wonder it's like well this guy's going to take a minute to develop um andre kojo comes in he only you know he's he, he's he came in he was like 16 years old you know is that right jason it might be like was he 16 17 something he like that might have been 17 when he started he was crazy young he's basically a year ahead of where he should have been yeah he, he okay. just turned 17 or something like that he's out there doing this stuff and then like you know like um on more mention you got peyton kirkland that comes out there doesn't look very buttoned up at all you know what i mean um and with this 2023 group it was always you know Jaden chapman trevor trevor gooseby the two guys that moved a little bit better than the others you thought might begin to get involved a little bit earlier and we're starting to see now it's like the depth is so good with the offensive line that even these 2023 guys that we thought might be able to develop a little bit quicker right we have Gooseby coming in looking like he could be the swing I think he's probably the swing tackle right I mean I would I would say I mean I don't know what you guys would say but he looks to me like definitely the third best uh, tackle that they have out there and could prove during this period to maybe be on the same caliber as Cam Williams. That's yet to be seen. I'm, I'm a little, little bit skeptical about that still, but um, that's at least a narrative that's kind of out there. But then the rest of these dudes, you know, I mean, out of that 2023 group, you basically have those guys just dotting like the third team of the, of the offensive line, you know? And, and so you just, you, you look at it, you're like, dude, this is, it isn't just going out there and saying like, oh, you know, we're all giving Tory Becton all of his um, pl plaudits. Is plaudits is is that the Ooh, right word? Plaudits. I, well, PL, well, is it? Yes. I'm, I like I'm, that. I'm, I'm not even sure that that's right. We're <laughs> well, we're giving him all these compliments and stuff about how good he's 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 developed these players and everything like that. And it is true. You go out there and these dudes look different, and um, they they they're they're built differently. They're flying around differently, man. And whenever you couple that with the fact that it's not just that the players look different and the athletes look different, it's with the depth of them. You know, there are, the, the, there are some guys that you wonder how they can get them on the field with the wide receivers, how they can get all these good guys on the field. I mean, Jason said it earlier about Parker Livingstone. That's a dude who's out there. He's fast as hell, dude. He's a like, that looks like he, he's, he's a good player. Um, but you know, he's probably going to be behind the guys like the Wingos, the Isaiah Bonds and stuff over there at the X. But then, you know, there's also like Matthew Golden. How is he going to get on the field? And then whenever Silas Bolden gets here, like what's he going to do about getting on the football field? There's these logs with the edge guys. You know, we can go on and on and on about it at most positions outside of the interior defensive line and say, man, the days the days of saying, gosh, we need to wait for these summer reinforcements to get here, it feels like it feels like eons ago. It's just it's just it's just it's just wild. Yeah. And the word keeps coming up. Somebody just chatted it in uh, that keyword. Blake says, so nice to see the depth of this team actually going to be worried about people getting enough PT instead of rushed onto the field. Guys, I say it all the time. You want guys who get to play, not guys who have to play. And it feels like Texas is working more and more towards that. Alex, since you just mentioned receiver, it's the position group that was in my head as we were talking. You were going through offensive line stuff. 
But to me, guys, that's another one. We had chatters all throughout the day saying, well, I remember the day when it was, whoo, you got Xavier Worthy, but other than that, what do you have? Or whatever that was at, at receiver. Anwar, let me start with you. What jumped out to you today watching the receivers and sort of the, the depth issue, uh, good and bad, that Sarkeesian's about to have to deal with? Um. Well, I liked Isaiah Bond uh, a lot. I think I think Bond and Cook uh, jumped out to me uh, as uh, the most. I thought Bond, uh, you know, I, I, I said this when we where I was on your show earlier. When I, I felt like he has soft hands, I felt like every time he caught the ball, it didn't seem like he was fighting with the ball, but I felt like it just landed softly in his hands, and it was just. Really good to see. I thought John T. Cook showed um, a lot of wiggle uh, when I saw him uh, out there. So I was really excited to see those two. Those kind of two kind of really stood out, I would say, um, you know, the most to me. I saw a little bit of Golden, but I, I really felt like um, those those are the, those are the, those are the two that I, I, I enjoyed watching the most not only when they were running uh their routes but then uh of course cook but then um even on punt return when i saw those guys back there i saw i saw a little bit for them so th those two really uh did it for me when i was watching them yeah, parker parker livingstone on 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 punt, on punt return <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He did. I, I I said the guys who did it for me. Parker <laughs> didn't do it for me on punt return. Uh, as far as that was not not compared to those two. Not compared to those. Two. I'll tell you not what, me. man. The guy that the guy that they were uh, the guy that they had Aaron they had Aaron Butler back there on punt return. I mean, Chris 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 Jackson was all over him about. You know, it's funny. He's he's like he's like running back and trying to catch the punts with his hands. You know, mm -hmm. and he's like, man, yeah. you like you you got to get under that thing, dude. You can't you can't be running back here and just trying to do your hands catches with these punts out of the jugs machine. I mean, it's like it's it's bad for it's bad for form, but man, it was it was good to show you what a, what an athlete that guy is. Man, he missed good. one. He missed one yeah. in, in the in the sky that just kind of you know he lost it and uh, and they had to get on him a little bit about that one. Yeah, if he yeah you know what they do? Field the ball consistently. He'd be a hell of a punt returner. I mean, that guy. I mean, talk about making guys miss in a phone book. That's him. So I mean, he'd be. He's young. He's got to work on the the finer points of it. But uh, in terms of making guys miss and getting upfield, he'd be he'd be pretty is, good. Is 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 making a miss in a phone book harder than making a miss in a phone booth? Did I say phone book? No, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. I was I was wondering about that one too. I was like, man. He beat me. He beat me by that much. New, you know, new obism. Yeah, they were. Alex beat me by that much. I like that one. I like yeah. that one. though. that was that was good. Uh, yeah, they don't. Uh, one thing they don't say about these Australian punters now, guys, is that they punt very catchable footballs. That's not what they do. That's not how it's designed. So yeah, you got to make sure you're catching it the right way. Uh, and there were a few different guys in the return game today, uh, Jason. In terms of the receivers, how surprised? Talk, let's talk about Bond. Outside versus inside, because there had been a discussion. And Alex, uh, you break down those snaps better than anybody and the percentages. And a lot of us thought, hey, Bond's going to be comfortable on the inside. Jason, how surprised were you for him to be out there? Not really. And honestly, it could change uh, at the next practice. But, you know, I think he's got the skill set. Like, I'm looking at some of my pictures, man. Like, Bond, like, one thing that surprised me about him, he's – He's Dick. not a thin, wiry guy. I mean, he's Dick. really well put together. Um, I mean, he looks like a guy that's been in the Alabama strength program for a few years. But, you know, you got Silas Bolden coming in. You had DeAndre Moore. I mean, honestly, I think a lot of these guys – I mean, I think a lot of these guys are kind of interchangeable that you can see them cross-train. I think John Tate could be a guy, if you really needed him too, he could be a, a dynamic weapon out of the slot. So, you know, I think a lot of these guys, you'll, you'll probably see them train at multiple spots, both inside and out. But – um, I wasn't totally surprised to see Isaiah Bond working on the outside today. I mean, again, to, to me, it was him and Jonte. Those those were one and one A. And then right. just kind of, you know, as the alpha dogs, the lead guys, they were taking the first reps from the jump, as you kind of expect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you were to put him inside today, who would be your top two outside receivers? It would be Jonte and – well, okay, so I mean, for, well, well, yeah. So, with, well, first of all, it would take a at this point, it would, you know, we've never seen it in the past, at least under Sark, with them 
taking the slot guys and having them cross train. They cross train the outside guys, but they don't cross train the slot guys. So if they if they would if they were to make that change, I would envision them making that change sometime during spring or like early in fall camp, right? But I, I just I've never seen them or heard about them doing. And I think a lot of those guys have the skill to practice. To do it. Right, right, right. Um, I think there's three or four guys on this team that probably have the skill set to play outside or inside. So we might see that change from day to day, week to week. You know, but we'll see if I don't. I don't think it would change from day to day or week to week. I think it would be something you would have to start out one of these periods in that way. But I could be. I could be totally wrong. Um, we just haven't seen it yet. But we haven't had this many really good receivers that we're monitoring ever so, before, right? The, the, where there's not, you know. I think that the fact that it, they came out today and it's a clear cut, you know, it felt like it was a – I mean, first group up, Jonte, DeAndre Moore, um, Isaiah Bond, that, you know, I thought that DeAndre Moore looked looked good. I mean, re, I thought – you know, I think it's reasonable to say he looked actually real, really good. Onward talked about the soft hands. He has those like – those like – those like sucker hands, like the, you know, I, I hate to say the Odell Beckham hands because nobody has those, but um, you know, really, really good hands, really good framing of the football. And that's something that, that you like to see out of these, out, out of these slot dudes. Cause you know, generally a lot of these routes that they run, these hitches and stuff, these two way goes, these option routes, they're having to position the football in a way that, that uh, where they can frame it to where they can get upfield as quickly as possible right after it. Right. So uh, De DeAndre Moore has that as far as the top two behind them. I mean, I think it's pretty clear the, the the two guys that were, that we legit know are cross training because we saw just even during the, what, four or five periods we were, we were out there today, um, Wingo and Golden both switched from side to side from the X to the Z so both of those guys are are playing it both. I didn't ever see um, one or seven or you know Cook or Bond. They didn't ever move from one side to the other, right? Parker Livingstone didn't move from one side to the other. Um, Aaron Butler didn't move from one side to the other. But number two and number five, so Golden and Wingo moved from one side to the other. So, but what I think that that means is that if something were to happen where one of those guys bumped into the slot, there would still be a discussion about okay, how can we fit in? either a golden or a wingo and what side would they be on? Right. And, and, and who, who would they displace if one of those dudes be it cook, or I think more likely bond since he's played it more moved into the slot. But as of right now, it's, I mean, I think bond looks good as an outside receiver, man. You know, I, I thought it, I thought the easiest way to get the most, you know, the, the best guys on the field would be to get bond in the slot. But man, seeing DeAndre Moore out there, I mean, that looks like a pretty good starting three to me. Um, but yeah, I think that the 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 it would be the moving parts of you know you know who's playing better between Matthew Golden and Brian Wingo to who would step up into the rotation should one of those guys move move inside. Well, the thing is, um, Alex and and Jason, when Sark uh, talked to us afterwards. Uh, he talked about having a lot of depth and versatility, and he said actually in practice today they were able to move guys from outside to inside. He said playing them in the slot and playing them in uh, on, on the outside. Uh, and he also said he talked. He about always them. says that though. I don't think he, he doesn't always say that. He doesn't always say that. Um, he, did, and he, he talked about it, he he said it last year with Jonte, and they never played him in the slot. I mean, all right, well, he's a liar. But he also mm -hmm. talked about moving the, the – they also had the versatility to move their runners around uh, as well. And he also went into the the explanation of because they actually have more depth now than in previous years, that's why they were able to do that, you know, not only going ones, twos, threes, but four stringers and being able to cross-train them. So We know – we know, guys, he loves that word versatility. He says it a whole lot. There are times when I think you could argue he he follows through on that. Then we've seen situations where maybe he doesn't. This may be the best test of that word, Alex, coming up, because I'm fascinated by the whole idea of – because I am I come at it from that fan perspective. I try to learn the X's and O's like you know so well. And I keep wondering, why can't I be an outside receiver that slides into the slot? Why can't I be one side and then the other side? Why can't I be moved around if I'm such a badass? I know there are football reasons why it can't happen, but this could this be a receiving group that really does test Sark's ability to use that word? 
versatility and see, really yeah. move these dudes around. If they're going to, yeah, because I'm saying the, the, the only reason I can see it happening and being different is because there's so many of these good players, right? It's the, like, it's the reason why I thought Bond would, would line up in this slot to begin with. And even though I think he looks great outside, that's, I still think, I still think that he could, he could, he could move in. And in games, we've seen these dudes who, I mean, they, they, they have, they have formations and, you know, Maybe what Stark means is they definitely do some stuff where sometimes there'll be two wide receivers to one side, a tight end, a running back split, you know, tight end split out one side, running back, and some, you know, as the two wide receiver to the to the um to the weak side of the defense and stuff like that. And technically the guy that's playing Z is going to be lined up in a slot alignment, right? Because there's because there's two wide receivers on that one side, right? So I, I think, you know, in actual games and during team settings, we'll we'll see him in the slot. I, um what I what I I guess what I mean is it just feels like when those guys train, they train with the inside guys or they train with the outside guys. And I, I just um, – I've never, you know, I've never seen or heard about it where, you know, one guy goes from one group to the other during a practice or between practices and, and stuff like that, although Sark says they can play either. Well, Before, you, also have a new, you also have a new receivers coach too. So, yeah. you know, we, don't, we have to see what his, what yeah. his philosophy is on that. Before we get to some other stuff, guys, somebody sent an interesting chat, and I wanted to talk about this guy. Vivek says, I thought Golden was a badass at U of H. How was he on returns? Um, talk. Let's talk about what is – I know it's one day, but you know, overreacting about one day, I guess it's kind of what we do. Um, Anwar, let me start with you. What does today tell you about Matthew Golden? From what you saw and the positioning mm. of things, what would you tell a Matthew Golden fan? Somebody that followed him, they're from H-Town, and they thought, man, I figured I'd hear Matthew Golden was out there, you know, first reps. Um, what are your thoughts on Golden today? Well, I would tell you that if you were on Orange Bloods, I would have, I, you would know uh, that I, 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 I no noted that uh, he, I noticed that he, uh, Golden received the most praise uh, from the staff uh, during punt, the punt return portion uh, for some, his ability to secure the ball and release. So I heard the, the, uh, out of all the guys that you hear them say good things about, whether it was, you know, Bond or Cook, it was that it was, if there was a, that's how you do it. That's that, that was more from golden than anybody else that I saw. Not to say other guys didn't get praised. He's the guy I know has got the most. Gotcha. Jason, how about your thoughts on golden right now from what you saw? I uh, don't have a lot, Chad. I'm sorry. I was on the other side of the field when they were working on uh, on return, so I didn't get to watch much. So you just work on one side. You were not switching and cross training one side to the other, just to be clear. Well, I'm like I'm out there looking through a tiny lens of my <laughs> camera for most of it, so like I don't have a broad scope of vision. So I saw him, of course, working on punt returns, but I think at that point I was I trying to get you. my Colin Simmons pictures on the other side of the field, so I didn't didn't get a good look. Yeah, yeah. Alex, how about your thoughts on Golden today? as part as part of the the depth here and you talked about him working a little bit on outside you know outside both kind of positions back and forth um do you see him i know just one day do you feel like he's kind of that got a floater kind of vibe to him in terms of receiver or um is it you know is it something that you think he's gonna he's gonna be able to fit in pretty quickly um um yeah i i i mean I kind of like Golden as a returner. I mean, I, I think I, I think he looks good back there uh, as a, as a returner. Um, we saw some good routes from him today. Um, the 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 one um, the one that the that they that they tweeted or xed or whatever posted from the Orange Bloods X account uh, mm -hmm. kind of fe 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 featuring him. You can see him kind of track the deep ball really well. And um, but yeah, I. I hate to say it, man, but it feels like these wide receivers were – look, it's like – it's hard to get your eyes off of Jonte Cook out there, you know, at, at least for me. He feels like the alpha. Um, and Isaiah Bond just, you know, really, really looks so good. To me, it felt like those are kind of the kind of the top two dudes, right? Um, I, I think – I. I, th I thought Golden looked. I thought Golden looked fine, though. He looks fast. Do you, you know the one thing I noticed about him mostly was that um, – he, he's more, he's like a lot of these guys. We 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 notice right a little more stocky, a little bit more filled out, a little bit more barrel chested than I would have figured. Um, so he has some B, some BMI, some 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 body mass index to him. Um, 
look, you know, looks like it looks like a good player. I think he's going to be in the mix to um, be in the mix to play. I mean, these guys are going to play. I think, I think honestly, they're going to be, fun. I think it's not going to be like it is from year to year where you have one dude who is like your 89 snap, 89% of offensive snaps and, and one guy that's like 84% and then your slot guy who's going to be 50% because Texas is basically going to run 11 per, 11 personnel about 50% of the time, right? They'll go two tight ends, you know, 40 something percent of the time. And when they do that, they usually take the slot wide receiver off the football field. And then I don't think that your next guy up is going to be one of these Jonte cooks that, um, that was only like a 9% snap participant last year. I, I think you're going to, I think you're going to probably have a couple guys who are going to take away from those two at the top at the 85, 89, 90% snap participation rate. Maybe you have your top two dogs be at 75, you know, 75, 70, right? Have your 50% slot dude and then have a couple of dudes that are maybe, you know, 20, 22% snap participants. And I think that that, if I were having to peg those dudes now based on one practice and based on what I'd seen, I would say it would, it would certainly be, be Matthew Golden and Ryan Wingo. All right, Modcast on day one of spring practice. Uh, we will take a breath here and let Specs give you a little. The Specs chat is packed full of folks right now. If you've been thinking about practice and you're a little parched, Specs can help. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets, it's Specs. Cheers to savings. Yes, indeed. 32 days till the spring game, 165 days till Texas plays Colorado State. Get all stocked up. Make sure you're ready to go. Uh, a lot of good oh, yeah. chats coming in. Uh, Jason, somebody threw something at you. Our man Cotton wants to know if there was a recruit at practice today. Yeah, you can take the quotes off. There was a recruit at practice today. It was funny how this worked. So I'm standing on the sidelines and I see a kid there. I don't think much of it. You see that quite a bit, right? Big kid yeah. with, with a big dad. Big dad. You know his dad? <laughs> his dad is Raja Bell, played in the NBA for a long time. Oh, well, that, that explains it. That yeah. Sons, Dallas Mavericks. Um, so I so I I don't recognize these guys, right? So I zoom in with my camera. I'm taking pictures of their name tags. I'm like, oh. Well, the kid is, I think it's Dia or Dia, I'm not even sure, D-I-A Bell, but he's a quarterback out of Florida, 2026 quarterback. He's ranked, and Rivals has a number 42 in the country. So, I mean, he's in that five-star consideration. Um, I've actually got a message out to him. I'm hoping to track him down and get in touch with him. I I didn't put two and two, and I saw I saw the name tag Raja Bell uh, for the dad. I didn't realize, oh, that NBA player, but now it's People are talking about on on the board. It's like, oh crap! I didn't realize that's who that was. But yeah, there was a high profile quarterback from the twenty twenty six class. Uh, Dia, I think is his name. Bell uh, was in town. So again, hopefully at some point in Orange Bloods, maybe this week, I'll be able to track him down for an update. Up, update, excuse me, to uh, see what he thought of practice. Very nice. Very nice. You always like the uh, like the ones where you think like maybe the you know the, the parents know about uh, know about big time athletics and right. certainly that would be one right there. Uh, by the way, Jason mentioned um, being out there with a camera. Let's give you a little uh, QR code to think about because all three of these guys you're looking at here outside of me were breaking it down on OrangeBloods.com today because they were at practice today. Jason took some pictures. What was it about 40, 50 pictures in the gallery? Yeah, it took about 300, and I didn't have to whittle it down and go through each one, so, but it ended up being close to 50, I think, in the actual gallery, yeah. And full breakdowns from each guy, so check it out at orangebuds.com. This is a perfect time for you to get on board, get signed up, uh, so you don't miss a thing uh, of this incredibly if historic. You, if you want pictures season. of Jason stalking little boys through his camera, uh, <laughs> sign up for orangebloods.com because Jason will zoom in and tell you everything you want to know about these young men. Yeah, you need awesome. to have someone take pictures of me taking pictures of the of my stalking. Yes, <laughs> Anwar, we decided against making the Jason taking pictures of of young men T shirt for Orange Bloods. That is not going to be made. We're not making that one. It's not going to happen. The reason why Jason can't go next to a school. That's the reason why. <laughs> Come on, man. Come my on. kids have to take the bus home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Anwar, I want to let you get a, a little discussion started here, kind of however you want to go. But you did you were there for the Sark part of things today and, uh, and what he had to discuss outside of what's already been talked about. Is there anything that you would want to throw out at this point? You know, a comment yeah, that well, the other I'll guys could react to? What, what came out of Sark for you? 
Well, there was there's a couple of different things. I think there was one thing that came out. Uh, he was asked specifically about three three guys um, and their weights. Sadir Mitchell at 372 pounds, Kendrick Blackshire at 261, and Savion Red uh, at 240. Uh, Sartre let it be known that uh, all three of them are heavier than he would want them to be. Uh, he said, you know, hey, they're not playing any games until September. I guess he kind of corrected himself in, in, uh, on the 31st. Uh, he said, you know, like, they'll probably lose some weight during the spring. And, of course, while they're running in, in June and July in DKR around 3, 30, 4 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, that weight should come off a little bit easier. So he said he's not too concerned about that. But he did say he 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 those guys are heavier than he would want them to be. And if you look at a Savion Red at two forty, that's a big guy. Like that, he, you can't do a Savion Red package this way. Yeah, dude. Like, not to, sorry to interrupt, but like, yeah. check out my photo gallery. I've got a couple pictures of Savion, and it wasn't by design. But like, even people in the chat or, or the Orange Bloods thread are commenting. He, dude, he looks like a totally different person. Like he looks fire like plug, man. Line. Yeah, like, man. What's like, he's I, trying to do. Yeah. He's got a little bit of a belly. People are like, was he moving the linebacker? And he also has a brace, like a pretty significant brace on his right. Starts at his hand and goes all the way up to his forearm. So I'm assuming maybe a wrist brace of some sort. Mm. And I got several pictures of Sadir, who I noticed was like standing on the sidelines during some. Yeah, I, I, I was, I didn't see what happened with that, but it felt like he was kind of a little bit, um, not. Maybe not with the rest of the group at certain times. Maybe he's kind of standing around by himself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure exactly what yeah, happened. I don't want to start any rumors or anything, but it, it, it did seem it did seem odd at times with with him. But it could have just could have been some something they had planned. I don't. Yeah. I don't. But I didn't get any pictures of Blackshire, but you can certainly see what Sark was talking about in those other two. Just well, just with just with now. just li listen with with Blackshire. If he can if he can look like that and actually move and not just be a muscle bound stiff. You know, um, you know, uh, total, um, total kind of just stand up, stand up straight, and not be able to move direction to direction and stuff like that. If he can actually move, like that guy would be a nightmare for an opposing run game with the way that he's built. He's just like he might be. We talk about all these dudes now. I mean, that guy's rocked up like very. He was rocked up in high school. Like that's what he was known for. I mean, he was monstrous in high school. But yeah, I'm sure because you you, I, you don't just turn like that overnight. There's got to be something in the something in the water where you grew up or something. But I mean. I I can't imagine that, and we didn't get to see any team drills today. Hopefully, we'll get to see some. We won't we won't get to go to practice on Thursday, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping next week we'll get a couple, maybe even one in the third week. They've been able they've done that before, um, and begin to see some kind of pseudo team drill stuff. I'd be really surprised if that guy's able to move and bend and and play not very stiff, man. A lot of those guys, I mean, when 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 they get so muscle bound like that. It just gets tough, but I mean, we can't pass judgment on him until we know. But I think that might be one of Sark's concerns. It's, it's kind of hard to see a dude who's built like that moving around in the way that they're going to need to be. Hmm. Um, he he also talked about Tavon replacing Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy, and I think this was something that maybe you know Alex has talked about a little bit, but. Uh, he basically said that, hey, those guys have been gr kind of growing and, and been productive over the last couple of years. He's felt like they've gotten better. And he feels like there's been there's a progression, as it, he said, you know, when it was it was Moro and, and Keandre. Uh, and he goes, those guys were replaced by Tavondre uh, and Byron Murphy. And he feels like this, you know, when it looks like Collins um, and um, – Broughton. Uh, and, 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 Co and Co Collins, I'm sorry, Collins and Broughton, thank you so much. Uh, with, you know, he thinks those guys, is, it's part of the natural pro progression. I uh, mentioned Savea being a guy who's played a lot of ball at Arizona. Um, he also thinks that uh, Dre Bledsoe is a guy who's pretty talented for them as well. Going into year three, uh, he thinks he likes, you know, um, Aaron Bryant. He thinks um, Alex January has been impressive in off-season workouts and conditioning. So he ends up feeling really good about those guys that are there and um, not feeling like there's going to be maybe a, a you know a major drop-off at this moment, but feels like this is part of the natural progression of the program, that those guys were productive before. And now it's just, you know, now this is their turn and their time to shine. And I know, you know, we also saw those guys. We saw Collins and Broughton and Bledsoe today. Um, they definitely uh, – Collins, uh, Collins has always looked 
like in you know an athletic freak you know Alex can attest to um guys at who at you know the senior bowl wanting to look at him and have a, a glimpse of him so there's never been a question of that but uh, a lot of good things as far as um sark on those guys Alex, i don't know if you want to jump in on that before i give any other uh stuff oh i'm just i agree with all i i agree with all that stuff um i thought alex january looked pretty i mean he he looked good today he, he's, he's 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 big He's big, yeah. he's a big dude. Um, we wondered, Alex, we wondered aloud, like, hey, I wonder if those sizes are accurate on him. Yeah, Boy, he, I mean, he looked yeah. like it today, didn't he? Yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty much right with him. We talked about it earlier with Savea, a little bit smaller than I would have expected. Um, kind of falls in that sort of Trey Moore bucket, right, of the of the transfer guys coming in who – um, maybe looked a little bit smaller than I would have thought. No, you know, no, no knock against either of them. I think that they both look fine. I think that Savea actually looks really, you know, really dense. Has a really good anchor through his lower body. I, I, I think he'll be fine. Um, with with Trey Morris, just he he's not quite as he's not quite as long and kind of slender and lean as somebody because you just see him standing next to Colin, Colin Simmons all the time, who's just a super slender dude. Um, but they're both listed as six three, and uh, you know, if if Sim if Simmons is six three, then Trey Moore isn't 6'3. But yeah, man, I, I just looked with with Vernon Broaden. They were lining him up at the nose. They had Alfred Collins at the defensive tackle during the one time that we saw any sort of team-ish drill, which is the pursuit drills. And you only get to see one, you you get to see their alignment once. And then they get him off the field because they don't want the media seeing it, right? But um Broughton was certainly at the nose. And if he's gonna be at the nose, he needs to hold up better against the run this year, right? And he looks like he 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 looks like a guy who should hold up against the run just fine, right? I mean, um, Alfred Collins has always looked like Alfred Collins. I feel like Vernon Broughton. I never really walked into a practice and said, "Oh, you know, Vernon Broughton, you know, yeah. he, he looks he looks like Vernon Broughton looks looks good." You know, like it's yeah. always been like, man, Alfred Collins looks like a beast. Tavondre Sweat is like this this you know this. Uh, great wall of china byron murphy's always this like bulldog mixed with a shark so sleek and fast and a dude with a body structure that looks like he wants to go to the beach and take his shirt off kind of guy but just so massive and big too and so he'd always kind of been overshadowed by those guys it feels like you walk out there now and the two big dogs that you really get your eyes drawn to are alpha collins and vernon broaden so i'm 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 i wouldn't say i'm confident that he's going to be better against the run than he has been because boys he gotten washed away badly during games and just been on a milk carton throughout games but um he looks like a guy that should be in line to improve and it feels like his his, his body's been uh, his body's been developing in all the right ways last thing i'll say chad um last thing is um is uh from sark he talked about leadership and that's kind of like the one thing that he wants to make sure they get they kind of get developed doesn't necessarily feel like he has vocal leaders at this moment um you know and so he doesn't you know because of that uh, he said he kind of found himself doing a little bit more in practice uh you know and this that's kind of been something i've been reporting on uh in the war room for weeks i'll quite honest with you is uh them trying to fit, find this leadership fill this leadership void especially with all the new faces that they have coming in uh here and everybody trying to fill their way around so he has admitted like he doesn't really have the amount of leaders that he would like to have on the team at this moment he said there's no roshan johnson who's a vocal guy uh but that will be something that they work towards and continue to work towards in the offseason all right, guys, before we wrap up, let me just ask the most basic because we haven't really talked any quarterback yet. Uh, anybody got a Quinn Ewers thought from today? How'd number three look? Look look good to me, man. Looks good to me. I mean, we just see him versus air, but he looks good. He looks uh, – looks, you know, I don't know if this is just me projecting what the what I what I think he should look like onto him. I thought he looked a little bit thicker than he did than he did in fall camp at least. You know, a little, little bit thicker, but not like he's put on bad weight. Um, what is he listed at, by the way? I don't it's even know 205. Yeah, 205. So, I mean, put on, put on a little bit of weight. Um, yeah, thought he, thought he looked good. Quinn always looks good in practice, man. I yeah. mean, he's just Quinn, Quinn looks, Quinn looks good. Anwar, you've yeah. talked about that weight today a little bit and uh, yeah. your, your, your thoughts and Sark's thoughts on it. Well, it was interesting because in my write up, I looked, I looked at, Qu I looked at Quinn. And I kind of examined him and I, I I wrote in my write up that, you know, he's at 205. I said, I feel like he should he if he, he should probably gain another five pounds before the start of the season. I felt like he would probably that'd be a good way for him. 
didn't know that 30 to 45 minutes later that Sark would be asked about Quinn and he would say, yeah, he's, he's good right now. And I would like for him to gain another three to five pounds this off season. So uh, I, you know, Sark and I kind of see the same thing. Uh, if you get him up to about a good two ten. I think you'll probably feel a little bit better uh, about him. So that's kind of my thing with Quinn. And like I said, I didn't know Sark would echo it, but I felt pretty good about my observation at that point. Two or five is good. I uh, put on an additional five pounds or so, probably feel a little bit better. Jason? My take on Quinn, uh, 6'2", 205, right? Not a, mm-hmm. not a small guy by any means, but you see him standing next to those other quarterbacks, man. I mean, Arch, let me look. Arch came in or is, on, is listed at – 6'4", 220. He looks every bit of that 220. We talked about it uh, earlier today. I mean, it, he is thick, and I mean, his lower half is thick. Even Trey Owens, the, the freshman, 6'5", 236. He's so huge. Yeah, that's he's a quarterback there. It almost makes Quinn look small, and he's not small necessarily. I mean, he's not, you know, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, 6'5", 6'6", but uh, Quinn's not a small dude by any means, but you see him when those quarterbacks are standing together, like, damn, you realize how big those other guys uh, really are. But, you know, like Alex said, it's routes on air today. Quinn's always going to look great in that situation, and uh, he throws a beautiful ball. But, uh, you know, I thought – I think we mentioned earlier, I thought Quinn and Arch looked good. Um, I saw a video as we're talking here. Trey Owens dropped a dime in scrimmage work uh, for a touchdown to Aaron Butler. So I sent you guys that link. Um, how that guy got that video, I don't know. But it was a beautiful ball by Trey Owens I just saw. Uh but um, some of the backup quarterbacks, the guys, you know, down the depth chart, third, fourth string, really struggled. I thought just throwing the deep ball, but, you know, first day jitters, call it what you want. But uh, I thought Quinn and Arch both looked fine. And for those fans that are just tuning in, Arch Manning is the backup quarterback for Texas. No one pressing him right now for uh, for that particular job. Or is he going to be the starter? Chad? Hey, but no, <laughs> hey, day one. It's day one. Let's not. We can't cramp up day one. We we we, we got to stay. We got to stay loose. Uh, by the way, before we get out of here, Oscar, I saw the super chat earlier. I'm not throwing this up in the middle of a conversation, but you did pay 199. How about King George at Kyle Field, Chad? Yes. The king of country music can be seen at a Kyle Field near you. Thank you, Oscar. We hope everything's going well over at the 40 Acres. Uh, we are 32 days away from the Texas spring game. It is the AM spring game on the same day. You can't go to both. You're going to have to you're gonna have to pick one. One o'clock on the 20th of April. Uh, and one other reminder before we get out of here, again, all these guys busting their ass over at orangebloods.com to bring you the very latest information on Texas as they get ready for their first year in the SEC. Write-ups from all three of these guys. Jason taking pictures, reputable pictures of football <laughs> players, uh, 40, 50 of them uh, there. So if you want to see, again, what we've been talking about, how did this particular guy look? Well, how does that guy look? Uh, there's the photo gallery there, plus the breakdown from the guys on what they saw and how they feel like everything uh, fits together, at least after one day of practice. And remember to like, subscribe, and get your notifications for Orange Bloods Live. Your next modcast will be Thursday. Uh, Anwar, uh, old fashioned, back tomorrow morning. Alex and I are back in the saddle. We will. Uh, it, we'll have to figure out what to discuss. Is there's, there's a lot of topics, and we'll have to narrow it down <laughs> for the best ones. So, I'm but sure. yes, we'll be back. Yeah, I'm sure y'all figure something out. <laughs> We'll be previewing Jordan Whittington's pro day, right? No, no. It is pro day tomorrow. That's true. Uh, it is pro timing day. So keep it with orangebloods.com and Orange Bloods Live for the very latest on that as well. Uh, Anwar and Alex tomorrow morning, and that is the old fashioned at 9 a.m., you know, when there's not a spring practice that they both got to go check out. Uh, so just keep it at Orange Bloods Live. We'll get you all the shows, we'll get you all the content and keep this. This conversation going. Thanks to all the folks on the Specs chat. We had a good group in there today uh, and we do appreciate it. So thank you for all your support. Everybody have a good rest of your Tuesday uh, and until Thursday at four o'clock for your next Modcast where I think Mr. Ketchum will be back. This was the Modcast, Jason, Anwar, Alex, and myself. We hope you have a good one. This is Orange Bloods